This video is sponsored by KiwiCo. Over our last few videos, we've been building projects using recycled plastic beams we've either made ourselves using our extrusion machine or we've bought in from local suppliers. And that's all well and good, but we love finding DIY alternatives to large scale recycling. So we thought we'd try our hand at making recycled plastic beams in a way that you can do at home. We're going to use our tried and tested method of melting plastic in our panini press, but we're going to make a custom mold so that we can make it into a longer beam. We've made some large scale projects with this method before, but nothing ever quite as long as a beam, so fingers crossed it works. We're making our mold using some scaffold boards, this pre-primed wooden board to give a nice surface finish, some aluminium angle, and some construction material to lock it all together. So the scaffold boards are going to be the base of the mould and we're doubling these up to make sure it's super sturdy. Using aluminium angle means not only is it super tough, but it also means that those inside faces won't have any screw holes for the plastic to fill. We're reinforcing the aluminium angle with some standard 2x3s and we're screwing everything together instead of gluing just in case the beam gets stuck and we need to unscrew it to get it out. For the pressing part of the mould, we're using some more of this pre-primed wood and then we're gluing and doweling it to a thicker piece of wood to reinforce it. Again, we're trying to avoid having any screw holes on the inside surface to avoid us having to have too much clean up when the beam is taken out of the mould. After trimming the dowels flush and giving the top piece a quick sand, we cut it to length and then it's on to adding a couple of really shallow angles to each side just so we can get it in and out of the mould nice and easily. Right, let's melt some plastic. As you can tell, we've got a lot of plastic and Semi Skim seems to be the UK milk of choice. Most of these bottle tops here have been collected by my students at the school I work at. Now that we've got the mould ready, we can start weighing out the plastic that we'll need. We get a lot of questions about how we calculate this and it's actually pretty simple. You can work out the mass of the plastic you're going to need using the density equation, which is just mass over volume. Yes! We wanted a 25mm thick beam, which means our volume was this and we know that the density of HDPE is 0.97. Putting that all together means we need just under 1.7 kilos of plastic, but we're gonna knock that up to 1.8 kilos just to cover any plastic we might lose during the process. We also thought this would be a great opportunity to use up some of those off cuts from older projects. We've got bits left over from the resin lamp project, the charcuterie board, the plastic welded box, and the cutting board video. Once again, we're busting out our trusty three pound charity shop panini press for this, and we're using a small toaster oven that we also got second hand for just 10 pounds. By the way, we only ever use these for plastic, never food. We like to melt our plastic in different batches of colors so we've got a bit more control over the marbling later on. We also put all the lids facing up so we don't create any trapped air pockets. Since those shavings are nice and thin, we're just chucking them straight in the oven as they should melt pretty quick.
Once we had a big mass of hot green plastic, we thought we'd add it to the oven tray so that we could empty up the press and carry on melting some more. Each time we're handling the plastic, we're using these silicone oven mitts to twist and squeeze out as many air bubbles as we possibly can. Don't worry, we've popped a link for them in the description. Our favourite thing about using these translucent lids is that when you melt them, they turn completely clear. Once we have more plastic than one brother can handle, we both donned our silicone gloves to continue twisting and folding. Once all the plastic was melted, we prepped the mould by adding a really light coat of wax just to the inside faces to prevent the plastic from sticking. We also wanted to find a way to preheat the mould slightly, so we borrowed my wife's extra long hot water bottle and left it in there for a few minutes. On to the scary part. So we had to be super speedy here because HDB cools super quickly. We took it out of the oven and gave it a few folds and twists to get it to the rough length of the mould before throwing it in. We used our bottle jack press to clamp the middle section of the mould and then a few clamps on either end. You could absolutely do this with just the clamps as long as you're quick. We did get a little bit of bowing on the sides so we came back and added some extra clamps there as well. Right, since we've got to give that beam a little bit of time to cool, we thought this would be the perfect opportunity to tell you all about today's video sponsor. We are super excited to be working with KiwiCo. As a design and technology teacher myself, I'm a huge advocate for getting more kids interested and excited about science, technology, engineering, art, and maths. KiwiCo offer eight different subscription lines, each catering to different age groups. Each box comes with everything that you need for that project inside, kid-friendly instructions, and a magazine with more content on that month's theme. Teaching kids to become effective problem solvers today means that they're gonna have the tools to change the world tomorrow. And that means more minds to tackle the plastic waste crisis. KiwiCo sent us a tinker crate as we told them how obsessed Luca is with claws. And this kit came with everything that we needed to build one using hydraulics. My kids both love building this, even if I did get soaking wet about halfway through. <laughs> KiwiCo is a great option for holiday gifts, so scratch the throwaway plastic toys and instead give the gift of learning and curiosity. KiwiCo now ships to over 40 countries, and by watching this video, you can take advantage of 50% off your first month of any crate by going to kiwico.com forward slash brothers make. We'll also pop a link in the description. Right, big thank you to KiwiCo for sponsoring this video. Let's go see if that beam has cooled down.
We are very happy and frankly a little bit surprised with how well that worked. We were thinking that the length of the beam might be an issue and that it could potentially cool down before we had time to properly clamp it. But fortunately it came out awesome. This is quite literally our first attempt with this brand new mold and we are very pleased it worked first time. It never happens to us. <laughs> now you could trim off the excess and leave it there but seeing as this whole thing is a bit of a proof of concept, we wanted to see how perfect and square we can get it. Now obviously any cutting, sanding or shaping you do to plastic is going to create some sort of plastic waste. As you've already seen, we're pretty meticulous about saving everything we can. But if that's not an option for you, then we suggest leave it as is, because the best way to reduce plastic waste is not to create it in the first place. We use our Triton surface planer and thicknesser to take this down to a perfectly square piece of stock and the results are beautiful. So whether you choose to use it straight out of the mold or you plane it down, this is absolutely a method that works to make DIY plastic beams at home. This beam is one meter long, but seeing as it works so well, we're quite tempted to just make another mold and see how big we can go. The main drawback to this whole process is time. It took the two of us around three hours to melt 1.8 kilos of plastic down and turn it into the beam. We're thinking with a few more panini presses, you could definitely do this quicker, but it would be great to hear if you have any ideas for making this more feasible. Before we go, we want to say a big thank you to our wonderful patrons for supporting what we're doing. We're actually looking to move our workshop soon, and it's the financial support from these guys that's going to be paying our rent. So if you want to join the absolute legends in the Brotherhood, head on over to patreon.com slash brothersmake, and we'll also pop a link down in the description for you. But as always, there's absolutely no pressure. You just watching this video is completely amazing. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> we're in a rush. we got to go somewhere. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one. Oh, that was so close. He shouldered me. No, you're wet as well. Brilliant. <laughs>